and gentlemen, as you might be able to tell, I am not at home right now. I am actually at Mustang Week, and here I'm at Broadway at the beach. And I am in a 2004 Mach 1. The Mach 1 is one of those cars that, since the legacy behind the name is so good, it's a very sought after car even today, even with this being a 2004. People want the Mach 1 more than just the normal GT of this year because this is a four valve per cylinder car while the GT is only a two valve. And the two valves are incredibly difficult to make power out of. This is definitely quicker than the two valve, by far. The two valve, which is a normal GT for all you not Mustang people, it's okay. The two valve is just the normal GT base, basically. And they sound good, but they aren't fast. You know that one kid that comes to the car meet in the two valve, he just keeps revving his motor? You're gonna beat him in probably your Camry. Now this car makes 301 horsepower and 323 foot pounds of torque. So it's no slouch whatsoever and being for an older Ford, it has solid power. The sound though is what really sells this car. This belongs to my friend Garrett. Garrett actually recognized me from YouTube uh, Mustang Week last year. And at the time it was very odd because pretty much nobody knew me back then. But Garrett is nice enough to let me drive his Mach 1. He's had two other Mustangs in the past. One was a two valve and the other was a 2007 California Special. But so far I think he likes this one the most because it's a manual. And the shifter in this generation of Mustang, it's kind of odd. It kind of shifts up a little bit and it, it's just in a weird position. So it takes a little bit to get used to. While the newer cars, it's right at your hand. While this, you have to kind of reach forward. But shifting wise, once you get the hang of it, it's easy, it's gravy. This car in particular is not stock. It has a JLT intake, an off-road X, and Borla Stingers. And they sound amazing. It's a cat bag exhaust system and it's pretty loud, but it's not too loud. If you drive this normally, you're not going to be ruining too many people's day, including all these condos around here. Sorry, senior citizens, I know you're in a retiree, but because Mustang. The clutch, as you can see, it's much stiffer than I guess you would say a, a usual manual car, like a commuter car, but at the time, this was a performance car. It's kind of sad about the Mach 1 because when the Mach 1 came out, another beast had kind of already taken the top dog spot in the Mustang world, and that is, as we know today, the Terminator Cobra from 2003 and 2004. Now, is the Terminator Cobra a better car overall? Yes, yes it is. But does that mean you should totally ignore the Mach 1? No, absolutely not. What comes with the Mach 1 is the legacy and the name of the old days of Mustang. And when the 0304 Cobra came out, it just was just so bonkers that this car was very overlooked. What makes the Mach 1 special in this generation of Mustang was that this has a shaker scoop. Basically, it lets a little bit more air into the motor. It was the only functional air scoop Ford ever made at the time. So it was almost embarrassing having that fake hood scoop on like the two valve models like I did. I had a 2002 and had that big old fake hood scoop and I was like, if only I had the Mach 1 scoop, I'd be so cool. Now the power gains from the hood scoop, there's not that much. Really what makes this motor much better is the four valves per cylinder. This car is much more similar to say a 99 to 01 Cobra rather than an 03 or 04 Cobra. It has a little bit different heads and the intake system I believe is a little bit different. So forgive me if I'm wrong guys. Another main difference between the 03, 04 Cobra and the Mach 1 was that the Mach 1 kept the live axle while the Cobras went IRS or independent rear suspension. Let's hear it a little bit. while you're driving the Mach 1 around Mustang Week. Every Mach 1 will wave back. Every single one. <laughs> Just one of 
those secret little clubs that every car group kind of has. Some people have Shelby's, some people have Roush's, some people have just normal GT's, and then there's the people with the Mach 1's. This car makes such a good backfire sound. Listen. Wait for the crackle. Some people kind of think the dark ages of Ford are the 90's and kind of the early 2000's, and for the most part, I agree with them, and I'm a Mustang owner. One of these reasons being the interiors didn't have that much thought. Let's go down the list. The V6 Mustang, the Mach 1, the 0304 Cobra, and the GT all had basically the same interior. There's nothing different. Maybe a gauge change, maybe a little bit, but that's it. Pretty much the same stereo, the same shifter, the same windows, the same, same everything. The only thing that's different are the seats. Well, and honestly, what do you do? Oh, this sounds so good. Woo! Pulls good. The red line of this car is 6,800 RPM, so it tacks out a little bit farther than some of the old Ford cars. The, the front brakes on these are the same as the 0304 Cobras as well, so they literally just kind of Frankensteined each car and just kind of mixed and matched parts. That's kind of a good way of looking at it. They're solid. They're not the best. The pedal feels a little odd because I feel like you have to really try, but they do bite pretty hard. Thank you all so much for watching this quick little review video as I'm here in Myrtle Beach during Mustang week. Other than that, thank you so much for watching this video and thank you so much to Garrett for letting me drive this car. And I think guys, it'll be a good stepping stone for the next Mustang I believe I will drive on video. So stay tuned for that one and I will see you guys next time. Take it easy. Say hi Garrett. Hello. Seriously, everyone just Oh, hey. Terminator. <laughs>